behind the scenes. And the idea with behind the scenes is to give you a glimpse of what it is that we do down here in Springfield. I think a lot of people really have no idea how this government functions. And so as a part of this series, I'm, I'm trying to take you through some of the steps of my day and things that I go through. And so one of the things that happens down here all the time between running the session, which would happen just on the other side of this wall over here, and being in committee rooms, which you've seen me in some of my Facebook Live videos do that, a lot of times what happens is people come down here to Springfield to try and advocate on issues that are important to them. And this is important to you to understand, is that you can do this too. You can reach out to me, and I always say this, reach out to me on Facebook, reach out to me on my, on, you know, call me, email me, whatever. But I'm going to give you an example of that right now. So just about a half an hour ago, this young gentleman here, Mark Sutton, approached me in the hallway and said, hey, can I have an opportunity to talk to you about some of my issues? And I said, yes, but would you agree to allow our Facebook Live viewers to see exactly what goes on here? Now, this is not scripted. That's all we've talked about, right, Mark? It is. That's it. He has no idea, but he's now on Facebook Live, and we're going to show you exactly what happens. And th this is what we do here. People come to us, they talk to him about their issues. I have no idea what he's going to talk to you about. He might have some bills that I love. He might have some bills that I hate. But I'm about to find out, and guess what? So are you. So Mark Sun, student pharmacist at which college of pharmacy? Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science. Fantastic. Grew up in Jefferson Park. And uh, so tell me about your issues, Mark. Yes. Uh, we actually have four house bills that we are looking um, to talk to you about. Uh, most of them are positive that we want your support on. Uh, the first one, though, I'm going to start with the negative. Okay. Um, and that's going to be House Bill 2392, which was put forth by Representative Flowers. Mm -hmm. um, and as uh, you may know, the Chicago Tribune article came out about pharmacists, and from that, some legislation was proposed. Okay. Um, we care about our patients, um, and we, we would love to uh, treat as many patients as we can and give them the best care, and this bill really prevents us from doing that. Okay, and so what does her bill do? What does it require? So there's a few things um, in this bill that we do not like. Uh, okay. The first one is that it requires pharmacies to fill no more than 10, 10 prescriptions per hour. So I work in a pharmacy that serves a lot of your constituents, mm -hmm. um, and I will say that if we could only fill 10 prescriptions per hour, a vast majority of our um, patients would not have their prescriptions. We're waiting days and days. Days and days. Okay. And that's true throughout the city, throughout the state, throughout the country. What is she trying to address? Is she trying to like say that by by doing too many prescriptions, you're making mistakes? Is that what she's trying to get at? Um, essentially, she and her bill comes from a good place. Sure. She's looking out for uh, her constituents and mm -hmm. patients. Um, and basically that, that is kind of what she's looking to say is that pharmacists are overtaxed. Okay. Um, but 10 prescriptions per hour is not is unreasonable. unreasonable. Uh, there's no cookie cutter answer for pharmac pharmacists in pharmacies. Okay. Some, pers some pharmacies will fill 300 prescriptions per day and some will fill 50 prescriptions per day. So there's not really a good way to put a quota on mm -hmm. prescriptions. Right. Um, is that all her bill does, or does it? Do it does a lot of other things. Um, some of the other things that uh, she is suggesting is um, having registered pharmacy technicians on duty whenever the practice of pharmacy is conducted, which, um, if you think about it, it makes sense. But there are certain times when a pharmacist may not need a technician, um, uh, certain hours of the day, at the beginning of the day or the end of the day, where there's not a lot going on in the pharmacy. So, to so a pharmacist technician is that, well, how is that different from a pharmacist? So a pharmacist has gone to school. Um, now many of them are doctors of pharmacy. Right. They, they are the, the last line. They do the prescription checking. Um, anything that goes through a pharmacy goes through a pharmacist at a certain point. Or the technician is there to assist the pharmacist. And, and this would require a technician to be there anytime business was being conducted? Correct. Anytime okay. the practice of pharmacy is being conducted. So let me ask you a question. Yes. Because what comes to mind when I hear that is that that there are like I, I think of you know I guess with the advent of these enormous pharmacies right. that the, the the smaller pharmacies are kind of they're not as there are not as many of them. But I can't imagine that if I go to some rural town, I'm not going to find some small pharmacy where there's just one pharmacist working and doesn't have a technician. And that's right? exactly correct. Like I was talking about before, there's no cookie cutter answer gotcha. for setting something. And this this is talking about the practice of pharmacy. So we're talking about community pharmacy, such as your, your retail pharmacy where you can go into, but also hospital pharmacy, 
Oh, right. uh, pharmacies that want some care facilities, nail works pharmacies, they all fall under the realm of practice of pharmacy. Because and a lot of those pharmacists don't have technicians with them because they don't need technicians with them. So, okay, very good. Um, some of that. Uh, Any other big involved. points you want to bring out about that, though, before we um, move on to the next? Uh, not much. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, there's one more thing is that there is current regulations that have been proposed by Governor Rauner to um, help pharmacists and to, to address the issue that Representative Flowers was trying to address. Um, currently, we have many different um, things that we're required to offer counseling for, so it's new patients, new prescriptions, and changes in dose, um, just to name a few. And the new regulations are requiring counseling. So if counseling was the issue that this uh, bill was supposed to target, it's already being addressed in current regulations that are out there. Okay, very good. So that you're, you, you would prefer that I vote no on that bill? Correct. Okay, very good. And now you got two others you want to talk about? I have three about? others, and the three other ones? ones will be a little bit quicker for you, so I don't okay, want to take good. up all your time. Um, the second one is House Bill 274, which was put out by Representative Musman, mm -hmm. and this is for improving women's access to hormonal contraception. And essentially, this is allowing pharmacists to um, administer a questionnaire, highly trained pharmacists, so they're trained for this task, and then um, to prescribe hormonal contraception to patients. We want to increase access. So you, you want to, you want a law that would allow pharmacists the ability to issue a prescription Correct. for contraception. Correct. Uh, student pharmacists now are trained in that, and Oregon, California, and Colorado are currently allowing pharmacists to prescribe contraception. So are pharmacists is, allowed to prescribe any other sort of uh, um, prescribable only type of treatment or medication? In certain, condi in certain um, situations, okay. uh, limited. Um, but we feel like this is a great step okay. to get to that point. All right, so increase that access to to, now to be fair, so yes. in case anyone who's watching yes. wants to know whether or not this was scripted, I'm going to tell you that my gut reaction mm -hmm. is that I would generally be opposed to that. I'm going to look into it yeah. further because okay. I'm certainly no expert on yeah, it. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I tend to think that you know there are certain lines like doctors prescribe mm -hmm. and pharmacists provide. Mm -hmm. So this would be crossing a line that I'm not normally okay. comfortable with. But that doesn't mean I won't consider it. So, all right, good. I've got that. Okay. I will read that up. What's the Perfect. next one? Um, next one is to recognize pharmacists as healthcare providers. Okay. So currently, we are not recognized as healthcare providers. Um, and what would having them recognize as healthcare providers? What would be the effect of that? So pharmacists can provide lots of services that we cannot bill because we are not recognized as providers. So currently, pharmacists can be um, paid for dispensing. So there's a lot of things that we do outside of just dispensing to patients. Okay. Um, whether it's diabetes education classes, uh, counseling, advanced counseling, and disease state management. Pharmacists are trained. I'm going to get my doctorate in pharmacy. I'm trained to do a lot more than just dispense prescriptions. Okay. And currently, we are not allowed to bill for it. So we can't provide those services to patients without getting any sort of reimbursement. By, by allowing pharmacists to be recognized as providers, we can bill for services that we are currently allowed to do, but we're just not allowed to bill for. So okay. we're not expanding the scope of the pharmacist, we're just expanding the scope of reimbursements. Right, right. And obviously the idea being that, and correct me if I'm wrong here, that there's obviously challenges that certain people in our state have access to with by allowing pharmacists to fill a gap that, that people Absolutely. Like to, we're the most accessible healthcare provider. Yeah. So if you can walk into your pharmacy and we're right there, where you can't do that with a physician or a nurse or a physician's assistant many times. Okay. So we're accessible, we're trained to do it, why should we not be allowed to bill for it? Why should we not? So if you're already providing the service, you're just asking for the right to be able to right. bill for the service. The right to be provided. known as providers. And okay. That's, that's essentially what we're going And who's carrying that bill? Uh, this is Representative Dan Brady, and this is House Bill 3833. Okay. And now you got one more for me. Last one, and I'll make this one quick because it's kind of complicated. This is, uh -huh. um, I like it's multifaceted, so I'll just kind of touch on a few small spots. This is House Bill 3285 from Representative Robert Rita. Um, and there's a few things it looks at. One of them is to increase medication adherence for patients. Pharmacists, we would like to be able to bill for medication synchronization. And essentially, that's allowing us to bill the insurances for a smaller amount of medication so that we can line up all the medications for a patient so that they can make one trip to the pharmacy oh. and increase their adherence. Because it's been shown that by having all of your prescriptions lined up, being able to come in to pick 
develop at one time, they're more likely to stay on. I, I like, see, now he struck a note there. I like that. That's a good one. Yeah, that's, um, that's part of this bill. Very um, good. And the other part has to do with pharmacy benefit managers. Um, and as pharmacists, we are, um, there's a lot of laws that pertain to us as pharmacists and pharmacy, to the pharmacist, but pharmacy benefit managers, um, there's not a lot of regulation that goes on there. We just want them to be regulated as, as they get more right. in a similar fashion. So we want to increase some of the um, provisions um, and basically just have what they're doing. Um, gotcha. Well, I like that. That's good. Now, that, it, clearly, I, we're holding up traffic here in the hallway, so we're going to let people go yeah. ahead and make their way through. I see Representative Anderson back there listening. Um, Thank you, Representative. And uh, so, so that that's what happens. And, and you talked to me about four bills here. Um, I'm, I'm probably with them on two. There's two I'm going to have to read up on. I'm yeah. not sure about one. I'm a little bit more concerned about than others. But this is what allows me to understand the issues before I go and make a vote on them. So that's what happens. That's a constituent advocacy right there, a constituent yes. of mine coming to advocate to me on behalf of bills. That's behind the scenes with State Representative Robert Martin. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Mark. Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you. Done. Awesome. Love it. Great work.